this video, I want to talk about Cubism. Cubism is an art style which was developed by Picasso almost 100 years back. Cubism is great uh, because it lets you sketch anything very, very easily. So it's great for people who don't have a lot of time. It's great for people who feel that their you know, sketching skills are not great. It just helps you capture anything that you see, any, uh, you know, any, any object, whether it's a portrait or it's a landscape or it's a, you know, a simple basket of fruit. Anything that you see around you can be easily captured, uh, you know, sketched using Cubist style. And the sketch looks more often than not great. So in the first half, probably for the you know next 12-15 minutes, I'll show you some great Cubist paintings by Picasso himself. And you know, so that uh, to some sort of, uh, you know, uh, encouragement for you, some sort of wetting your uh, appetite for this kind of painting style. So I'll do that for the next 15 minutes or so. And then I'll uh, take another 10 or 12 minutes to, uh, you know, just sketch out something uh, in Cubist style. So I hope by the end of this video, you get enough content to uh, try your own Cubist sketch. And, uh, you know, I'm sure it's going to be great. This is a Cubist work by Picasso. Now, the thing to focus here is that this is a still life picture. You can see a candle. Uh, you can see a jug and you can see a vessel on the right and you can see a candle stand as well but none of them have been drawn in a realistic manner picasso's idea was to capture the main contours rather than create a 3d or create a realistic uh, rendition of the candle jug or the vessel so if we zoom in and just look at the candle i think it's been beautifully drawn and you can easily make out that uh, picasso has just focused on the main uh, you know shape like look at the candle look at its characteristic shape coming out look at the shape of the you know the flame on top it's beautiful and and you know just that very characteristic contours of the burning candle has been captured here similarly uh, you know it's, it's the same for the jugs as well like if you look at the left you can see the jug uh, and you know it, it has a beautiful triangular mouth and then it's not drawn in a way that uh, you know it looks like it's a real jug, but it's drawn so that you, uh, you know, you're able to appreciate the triangular contours on the jug. And similarly for the vessel. So the idea here is that, uh, you know, uh, Picasso just wants you to focus on the main contours, the main shapes, the main lines in whatever objects you're trying to draw. And not worry about, you know, creating a 3D picture or creating a realistic rendition. And incidentally, what happens is that in, 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 you know, in doing so, the painting becomes much more memorable. Now, I'm sure by now, if you're looking at this, you would remember this painting of candle jug and vessel compared to a, you know, a realistic painting of the same subject. Here is another example. This is another still life uh, sketch or painting, whatever you want to call it, by Picasso. You can see there's a fish bowl and, you know, there, there are some fishes in the center and then you know, there's a fruit and there are some what looks like a guava uh, in the bottom left, bottom right. And there's a bowl and there's a beautiful glass and, you know, there are some bottles behind. This is another still life painting. And again, Picasso's focus is not to, you know, draw, draw the still life realistically. It's to capture the main contours, like the shape of the fish, uh, you know, the eyes, the mouth of the fish is, you know, uh, how a typical dead fish's mouth looks like, the beautiful shape of the fruits. And then the colors and everything else is just muted. And let's look at something else. This is another still life by Picasso. And this is more, more uh, uh, you know, so as to say abstract. Here as well, you know, you, you see a, uh, on the right, you see a, some sort of a bowl. Not a bowl, uh, a vase. And then some very sharply shaped flowers coming out of it. And on the left, you can see a basket with some green fruit-like things. So again, it's not about, you know, creating realistically what, what uh, you know, you see in front of you. It's about capturing those characteristic, uh, you know, contours. So the, you know, sharp bent lines of, you know, the flowers, the triangular shapes, the, you know, the sharp lines on, on, on the basket, sharp lines on the, you know, on the vase. And that's how, you know, cubism works, that you're trying to capture the main characteristic contours. We already saw this one. Let me show you a portrait. Okay, now this is uh, a painting done by Picasso in 1907 called, uh, it's a French name, 
it's something like the Moselle's, the Avignon. This was this is considered one of the you know cornerstones of modern art. And here as well, uh, you can see this female nudes here, drawn with bare minimum lines, so that you can just see you know the shape of their bodies, uh, appreciate their hands, the shape of their bodies, the strong chest line, the strong arms. And then when you look at the faces, the faces are again not drawn realistically, uh, like. The faces on the right, on the top right, is almost drawn as if it's a, a you know, a, a mask. Similarly, the face here on the right is drawn as if it's a mask. And the other two three ladies as well, their faces are not realistic. Uh, the idea here that Picasso wanted to convey was that he was. This was a scene from brothel, and these women are, you know, not happy uh, at being, you know, perceived as, uh, you know, just objects. Uh, as being completely objectified for the male gaze. So that perception, that discomfort of the women, uh, you know, is what Picasso has beautifully captured through this cubist style. And uh, then let me show you what is typically considered the most important work of uh, modern art. Uh, this was done, I think, in 1937 by Picasso. This is the painting of Guernica, called Guernica. So it's inspired by uh, Guernica, uh, which uh, which was a Spanish village which was bombed, uh, you know, in 1937, and that agony, that pain of bombing has been shown here. Again, everything is there's no there's no colors here. It's just gray, white, and black. And then you know, this painting has a lot of things going on. On the left, you can see a bull. You can see a woman who is wailing and carrying her child in her hands, and a lot of fingers. And then. In the bottom left, uh, you know, you can see a dead man with uh, bruised arms. And in the center, you can see a horse. On top of the horse, there's a bulb which looks like it's about to burst, like, you know, there's a blast happening. On the right, you can see this, uh, you know, heads which are coming out in the air, like there's a ghost coming out of a dead body. On the bottom right, you can see, uh, you know, in the center, you can see a hand. You can see a hand which is just holding a sword. Uh, this one here as if it's a soldier, you know, who, who died in that battle. And on the, on, the, on the right, you can see another soul who's, I think, crying in agony as the uh, blast was happening. So this is a very, very powerful painting. And just everything has been done using, you know, uh, pure cubist contours. Look at the way the horse has been drawn, just the eyes, and then, uh, you know, the sharp teeth, the big open mouth in agony something pointed coming out of his mouth as if he's shrilling he's crying he's, he's he's shouting in pain and on the on the left here you, you can you can see you can see the child you can see the mother her eyes dropping as if they are tears the multitude of hands everything in beautiful cubist styles all the hands are bruised they're broken and bruised the leg the leg in the bottom right it's broken and bruised it's all done in cubist style so that you just focus on the contours the power is not in drawing a realistic image here. A realistic image of a you know horse dying or somebody crying would have had a much less impact than this cubist rendition because now you're just focusing on the contours and you fill in the details yourself. The picture shows so much more than what a realistic image could do. And I guess that's why it's considered uh, uh, you know one of the most important paintings ever done, at least the most important painting of 20th century. Let me show you more example. Yeah. Look at this portrait by Picasso. So Cubist style can also be done to draw portraits. Now the expressions are very complex. Uh, sorry, not complex. I would say you can't say that she's happy or sad. It just looks as if the woman, you know, has something to say. Like her eyes are beaming out and, you know, the mouth is just about to open to, you know, have a conversation with you. And then look at the hair, like all done with minimal, uh, you know, de details as in, but you can still make up that she has a lot of fluffy, uh, you know, lush hairs with a lot of uh, strong, uh, you know, uh, hair strands. And then as you go down, uh, let's look at her legs. Now these are again drawn in very, you know, simple cubist sort of manner, where and it's just the contours, the outlines, which have been drawn here. And and then the fingers, the shape of the fingers and the legs, you know, the feet have been adapted so as to, you know, uh, suit the overall image. And I think with time, you can appreciate why those adaptations uh, were done by Picasso. This is a perfect example, I think, of how, you know, in a cubist style, you can create portrait as well. 
This is another portrait. This is a woman crying, and you know, if you look at it for a you know, few more instances, you can see the tears here, you know, right at the, uh, you know, below her eyes, and you can see her fingers coming up to her eyes, as if uh, you know she's wiping off those tears. And then you know, in front of her mouth, there, in front of her mouth, you know, there are there is there are another set of fingers, as if something is, uh, you know, some sort of a sigh is coming out of her mouth, and you know those. Uh, fingers are capturing that. This is a powerful image, and I guess because it's cubist, so you can just focus on the agony on her eyes, the you know the sweeping uh, fingers below her eyes, trying to wipe the tears. The uh, strong fingers in front of her mouth, trying to contain the the sigh, the, the thing you know the fire which is sort of like bursting out of her mouth in agony. And so the main contours are here in focus, and the colorings and everything has been done in very flat, simple style. So that's about this. All right. So I got this uh, cute little soft toy, this battery-powered dog here, and I'm going to try to sketch it in a cubist manner so that the sketch is quick, and it's 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 really a lot of fun to you know uh, sketch something in a cubist manner. So first of all, before we go for the sketch, let's look again at the dog. Uh, you know, look at it from all sides and everything. So I think uh, to me the most interesting aspect would be this front angle. I think this angle is what is most, you know, prominent about his personality. So let's try to sketch this very angle. All right. Now, since this is a cubist sketch, it's got to be fast. So he's got a big ovalish sort of head, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see this this little nose bump here, on here. So let me just place some sort of a triangular nose here, and then let's go back. Let's look again. Yeah, he's got a little mouth here. So this is uh, just that, and then what's below that? He's got some curls here. Wait. And then some soft little legs. All right. So that's the you know basic outline. Then let's also maybe do his eyes. And then what about his ears? Oh, so the nose is right below the eyes. So let's broaden up the nose a little. And then let's give those ears so that's the you know that's some sort of a outline for the dog but now this has to be cubist right so this this has to be uh, minimal sort of lines the main contours so the main prominent thing is you know look at these lines here look at these lines look at the shape of the ear the artificial button like eyes and that nose and these curls here so those very contours I'm going to, you know, make very prominent in uh, using minimal lines. So let's go for the easiest part. Let's go for the nose. Sorry, I'm, yeah, I'm just have this in my hand. What about the eyes here? Right. And then let's look at how his face is here. Let's look at the top of his head. So, some sort of a round thing. And he's got some curls here. All right. What about his ears? Some sort of shape like that. Right, that was a quick one. That's a you know simple cubist style sketching uh, sketch of a, this dog. So the thing to notice here is that this was quick. This was a lot of fun. This isn't as cute as this dog, but still you can see it's dog. Yeah, still got you know some dog-like things here, and you know within a couple of minutes and while I was uh, 
you know, I, I was doing this live, I'll, you know, just sketching. So, so let's let's uh, you know we could you can always add a little bit of you know colors here, and you can you know add anything you like. You don't have to make it like the same color. It could be anything. It could be a pink dog for all you care. So you can just add some pink contours. Sorry, uh, pink shades here. So the camera is in one hand and the color is in another. So just bear the uh, you know jerky movements. Why? It's got to be quick, brisk lines, and then what about this pause? Yeah. A little bit on his ears. Hey, hey, the fellow just fell down. All right. Uh, you could still further do some things like, you know, add a, you know, make, make those eyes more prominent and stuff like that. And that will really pop this thing out. But then minimal lines, you know, just the outline, just make those things darker. Whatever contours, whatever lines you think are important, make them darker. Right? All right. So that's the fella in a, in a cubist. <laughs> Sketch style. Now let's let's do another thing. Now let's uh, perhaps do a do do something totally different. Let's let's do a sketch, and then you know. So this this dog was like how you can use uh, cubist manner to sketch anything. You know any object that you see in front of you. Now you can also use cubism to sketch something that you have in your mind. So let's do something very complex. Let's use a face. So now I want to draw a quick face in a cubist manner. But with a face, I do want to give it an expression. Like with a dog, uh, you know, whatever, you know, happy and happy or whatever, you know, artificial expression he had, I just did that. But now with a face, I do want to give it, uh, you know, some expression. And let's do it in a purely cubist manner. So with a face, you just, you know, Broadly, what does a face look like? It's, you know, two almond shaped eyes, right? And there's a, you know, nose here, and there's another eye, right? You have to be quick, so lines can be imperfect. That's perfectly fine. Uh, then you got some eyeballs here. And then you got an outline of face. And then you got some lips. It's broadly how the lips look. Now with this, uh, you have to choose what expression you want to give the face. So you can keep adding lines till you get that expression. So if I want to give it a sad expression, I'm going to take up a line and just make it a little sad like this. And I know this out of experience because I've been doing such sketches for ages. If you're doing it for the first time, you have to keep experimenting till you get that expression. So the moment the lines, you know, fall down from top to bottom, there's automatically something, uh, you know, sad expression come out. Similarly for both, both, both these eyes. You see? You see, now he's no longer neutral. Now that's a sad face right there. You can obviously give it some ears if you want and add some, uh, you know, gravity to the lips. That doesn't really change the expression. It just makes the sketch look more, more pretty. And then you can further, you know, uh, add details to the eyes but just by using minimum lines so that it's all quick and uh, you can and you get the expression that you desire so i'm just adding lines a little bit of shading to give that expression 
Now I can give the fellow a hand to rest as well. So let me draw a basic hand. That's the palm grip. That's the hand. Let me give him some heat here. And you can further highlight the main curves. Here you go. That's your sad cubist face. So the whole trick here, whole concept here is that you draw, when you're drawing something from imagination, you just draw the very basic structure of it, like in minimal lines, just I did, you know, the eyes, the nose and the lips. And then you keep experimenting with new lines, you keep adding lines to give it the expression that you want. And if you think of one line is wrong, like there are some lines here which are not really, if I didn't have that line here, now look, it's, it's an even more powerful expression. But that's fine. Some lines can go wrong and you can always mitigate that by adding more lines. That's the whole fun. So you don't have to stop. It's not like now is the time to stop on this sketch. I can keep adding more things to make it, uh, you know, further enhance that uh, expression that I want to give it. So you don't have to stop till you stop adding lines, till you get that exact expression. And with each sketch, you're going to get better at it. And trust me, it's a lot of fun. It's, it, it is fun, it is, it is just, you know, I can do this all day if, you know, somebody was paying me. <laughs> this is, uh, you know, how you can do stuff. Let's go back to the previous page. That's the dog fellow right there. All right, I hope this video was useful. I mean, you, if you're a beginner, you must try sketching new things in Cubist manner. This is just such an important style and so easy. And most importantly, it's so much fun. It is so much fun. You must try. Thank you.